and welcome to episode six of the Armor Bites podcast. Today we're going to be joined by our shop hand, Megan. Uh, we've decided to go ahead and fire James this week. Uh, he's been a little bit too, uh, hmm, how do you say, controversial. You know, caused a little too much drama everywhere, so we'll just bring the drama in with Megan instead. Uh, last week we covered all our announcements and everything that's going on. So all the shop projects that are happening, and that's kind of what I'm presenting in front of y'all right now, is we have the masters printed for the tank driver, iCat juggernaut driver, and the, our new version of shore trooper helmet. Um, we weren't in desperate need to get a shore trooper helmet out, but we had two molds for it. We had a large helmet and a, and a regular size helmet. And when I kind of ran across this one and the sizing on it, this is gonna kind of be our new standard helmet slightly larger than our uh, current helmet. And then we'll take our current helmet and turn it into our small helmet. So it'll be more like the petite version and this will be the standard version. But the details and everything on these were just phenomenal. Uh, they're gonna start going through cleanup and molding. So these are gonna be the first two that you actually saw from last week that'll be coming out. Um, top priority is getting the tank done. Second priority is getting the shore trooper done here because we got orders to fill. And I'm, I'm personally like really starting to Jones and want to do the juggernaut driver. Um, we, we already redid the chest plate. So that master's sitting out there waiting to get set up to a uh, forming mold. So as soon as that's done and this helmet's molded, I'm personally going to be doing a juggernaut driver. You know, it's just one of those lightweight, easy costumes you can wear just about anywhere, be comfortable in, doesn't have a whole lot of components to it, but you still get to look pretty cool. As long as you don't take off your helmet in front of a uh, superior officer and decide to blast him for being a douche nozzle. Feel free to chime in any time. <laughs> uh, why, yeah. wh why do I need to hide behind a helmet? Because you get to make fa faces at people when you're walking can... by do that I mean, you can do that anyway helmet. but you can do it like with wild abandon yeah, whenever you're true. wearing a helmet that's true so I mean, it gets boring sometimes when you're just doing those stand around pose for pictures events you know sit around stick my tongue out you know pray for mercy wonder oh, why i didn't it, it almost be like you know back to wearing masks again and you can see oh, pretty mouth, much mouth things at people now that's actually one of the ironic things is a lot of the conventions during the um times of dealing with the unknown virus of unknown origins <laughs> um like you still had mask mandates but you're wearing a helmet well you know it, it, seriousness aside why do i need to put a face diaper on when i'm wearing a helmet because that's all they really did anyway was just keep you from spitting on everybody whenever you're talking to them so i'm wearing a helmet sure if i take it off and you know, i'll put it back on yeah whatever Thankfully, that should be behind us now that they've embezzled billions of dollars and had the biggest transfer of wealth in history. Uh, anyway, that's kind of a divergent topic right there. And totally not what we need to be talking about. But, um, yeah, Th this is a baby, my baby. I've been waiting on this for a very long time. I can't wait to see it molded. So, waiting on it as long as you'd been waiting on the Doomslayer? Um, no, technically longer because we really? had a mold and then all the crazy detail shots came out, you know, all this junk that's underneath it, mm -hmm. the helmet mold that we had didn't have all that stuff. So it just kind of got discontinued and the master's still sitting out there. You know, it's just been waiting for the right helmet. We were going with another one and then the guy that we went with, with that helmet sent us a message and was saying that that was his older version and to please use his new version. And then I looked at his new version and it's like, I didn't notice many things that were different, but we were already on the Cam and, Cam and Leon FX uh, Patreon. So I was like, hey, screw it. Let's just stick with his stuff. Uh, no offense to the other helmet, it's free on Thingiverse. It's a great looking helmet too, but this is apparently the most accurate one. It was modeled after the uh, Anovos which they use the Anovos and the Mandalorian, so it's accuracy. That's what you're going for with this. But accuracy as far as having, like, the double-layered 
visor mount thingies, which actually aren't that bad now that we can just print them out. Because that's all these are. These main shells will be rotocast. The other details will be printed from ABS uh, resin. And yay. I mean, honestly, I kind of like how this is a three piece now. Yeah, it's neat. I mean, it does make it stand off. Like, I had no problem gluing them down, and you don't really notice it. But yeah. I mean, it, it's neat. It's it, they're neat little features. It makes it look cooler, you know? It makes yeah. it stand out a little more. It's more make Star Wars y. Unnecessary mounting options. <laughs> It's like putting a scope on a scope on a scope or mounting a scope backwards on yes. a blaster. Yes. Like, why do you need to mount a scope flat backwards? Uh, it's prop designers. Because why not? Uh, it's prop designers. And just, just let, let them be. Or it's that one person that uh, does it to see if anyone notices. Oh, they will notice. They'll definitely notice. Don't, don't get the gun guys involved. I mean, they'll really notice at that point. I don't want anyone to deal with them. Oh, yeah, all these little things coming on the horizon, so uh, y'all have had a chance to view that. These are up for pre-order right now on the website. Um, we may offer a little special. We may not. I don't know. Uh, just kind of help push the funding through, but they're happening one way or the other. Um, a lot of times we do the projects because they're things that I personally want to do, and that's what fast-tracks a project through. Which I guess I'll go ahead and say another announcement, because you don't even know about this one yet. Ooh. <laughs> Unicorn Doom Slayer? No, not happening. <laughs> um, it's the one thing to complete the Dark Trooper project. Me. Oh, well, that was your hint. That's what you're getting. That's your hint. So I have the Moff Gideon Beskar helmet printing right now. Another one from Cam and Leon FX. The more I looked at the model file, the more it kind of grew on me. And it's no. like, you know what? Forget about it. I'm going to do the it. The one that we saw in the final episode. Yeah. Yeah, with the with the horns. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if the full armor is going to come on that. The helmet started growing on me. So it's kind of like, yeah, why not? So we'll probably have that sitting out here for next week's episode at least the master so where we had six helmets to mold this year one is already done i'm just gonna go ahead and add another one why not you know so there's at least seven helmets that we're going to be launching this year seven and at an average of four days to make each mold that's 28 days of my life spending spent this year making molds a whole month. A whole month making molds. A whole month I will never get back. I mean, you could listen to a good audiobook while you're making the molds. No, nah, I'll just keep listening to YouTube. That'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there's plenty of Star Wars audiobooks. <sighs> nah, it'll be fine. And make it more. Nah. Nah. I'll just keep listening to lore videos and... Uh, okay, the lore videos are, are pretty nice. I think I'm pretty much done with the lore videos right now. I've been through, like, That's everything. That's disappointing it, because it I've actually been enjoying listening to them. I, I, I've been... I like the lore videos because I can run them in the background. I don't have to watch them. I can just listen to it and you just kind of hear, eh, it's neat. But if it's an audio book, if I forget to pause it, then... And I'm walking up front, and I can't hear it anymore, and i got to rewind. That's just too much trouble. You know, I can walk away from a lore video because, like, half of it I know anyway. Sometimes they just, you know, throw out a random fact. And it's like, oh, that, that's True. a nice little nugget for me to store somewhere and come up with six months from now during random conversation or podcasting. So, yay there. So, I mean, that's kind of a nice little recap of everything that we've had going on here. <clears throat> so, since we have Megan here... I'll we'll introduce you to her. You've seen her in pictures, maybe. Um, and we'll we'll talk about some of her roles around here and uh, whatnot. So first, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let everyone kind of know who you are and um, a little bit about your background. So yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'll, uh, I'll ask you some questions. Um, I'm Megan. I am the designated painter for... All of the armor so majority of the armor that you see come to you uh, I painted 
Um, and masked. And masked. Lots and lots, lots of, of masks. taping. I hate masking. Um, oh, my God. I, I do it, but I just hate it. So like, here, mask this. <laughs> um, also, the occasional instigator or hiding things to see how long it takes for Michael to find it. What, like googly eyes? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just googly eyes. I don't even notice them anymore. <sighs> Yeah. You know. If you're hiding you. tools, that's gonna make me mad. No. No, I mean you, you're hiding stuff. I I was missing my razor blade out of my top drawer. It's somewhere. Oh, that's that's not me. Okay. Nope. Nope. Yeah. I Maybe don't you go in your got, drawers without permission. You got dug. So what did you do before you you, you decided to join us um, here? Um, before I decided to join here, I was just kind of floating along, not quite sure what I wanted to do. I was um. I used to be active duty in the military, did a lot of hands-on stuff on the boat and stuff, lots of painting, lots of sanding, um, et cetera, et cetera. Got out, moved back down here. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Get out of the military doing sanding. <laughs> yes. You can come to civilian life and do sanding. Because guess what? You uh, want to make props? Do you like sanding? There, it's a lot of sanding. It's it's a lot. A lot of sanding. A lot of sanding. Probably 75% of what we do is sand. Yes, yes. Lots of sanding and dremeling and more sanding. Uh, and technically, that's high-speed rotary sanding, yes. but yeah. And then... Some way shade it's belt sanding, it's palm sanding, it's hand sanding, it, it's rotary sanding. It's, uh... Is, is there another type of sanding I'm missing around here? Nah, that's probably about it. Give it to block sanding. Oh, you know, yeah. There's block can't, sanding. Can't forget about the block sanding. Yeah, block sanding if you need to plane something off flat. Yeah, that's about it. Sanding. Yeah. So if you have any shop essential tool, at least buy a palm sander. It makes at it least. much, much easier we have instead of hand sanding. Three of them I can think of. One at like each workstation. Maybe a fourth one out there. I don't know. Two belt sanders. You know, get a belt sander. You know, That's also Belt really sanders too. really save your life. <clears throat> it, anyway. So anyway. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. So now that we're done talking about sanding. <laughs> our favorite thing to do around here. Oh, I mean, don't you love the sand? That's just so... It's like I'm on autopilot. You know, I don't even have to think about it. It's just like, grab sandpaper. Time to sand this. It, you just do it. And then, like, if I'm working on something that somebody else has worked on, I can tell if they did or did not sand it, like, before it's gluing very, parts together. It's I can very just tell. obvious. It's very obvious. Um, so I, I moved back down here, um, because I had a son down here is not a half bad community. Um, it's really not. I mean, uh, I don't know if you heard, but Florida just got number one on education. I don't know how we managed that with our Florida man stuff, but I, I'll take it. Okay. We're just now getting number one. I graduated in 98, so... It's Doesn't do me any good. Yay for our future children. Yay. But then again, we're also directed and produced here by Motion Method, who's my oldest son at 22, when he got like a whole bunch of certifications when he was in public high school with uh, Microsoft and Photoshop, and that's snowballed into what you're kind of seeing right here. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it did something. Plus that entrepreneurial spirit, it's in your blood. Is it? Okay, is he paying attention? Nah, he, he, he's just like scrolling TikTok or something right now. That'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so that's what you did. That's what brought you here. Um, now, you've done cosplay, costuming, and whatnot before. What kind of like got you into wanting to do it? Um, it was something that I enjoyed as a kid. Um, my dad is who got me into the whole Star Wars and science fiction and stuff. And, um, so I got picked on a lot because it wasn't cool no. to do any of this when I was growing up. No. And, um, but I really didn't care. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah. Um, so when. Do what makes you happy. Yes. Don't don't let people tell you otherwise. You know, if it makes you happy, as long as it's within legal realm, 
uh, go do it. You know, enjoy it. Enjoy your life. Your, your time here is limited. Make the most of it, dude. But my, my dad. Um, so, you know, reading different Star Wars books. And uh, at one point, I had every single Star Wars book you could possibly own up until 2007. Um, like, I had a ridiculous library. And so, which all that is like legends now doesn't count. Unfortunately, it's not like we had forty years of Star Wars stuff to to, to feed off of. <clears throat> KK. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love to see uh, Mara Jade become canon. Mara Jade's probably going to be Omega, something silly like that. Oh no. Yeah. No, Mara Jade is known for her fiery red hair. And when are we going to see Admiral Thrawn? Um, in the Ahsoka series. Like, we're, we're actually yeah. going to see him? Yeah. It, it's uh, uh, Mickelson's brother. Mads Mickelson's brother. I think <gasps> Lars Mickelson. Ooh. He did the voice in Rebels. So they slapped some blue Twilight makeup on him and red contacts. and yeah. They at least made an effort, right? I don't know. Oh, please don't ruin this for me, Disney. Uh, it'll be horrible. Or great. No. I hope it's great. So, like, the Thrawn trilogy was one of my favorites. Um, now, you're talking about Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising. The original. And, and that last one. Yeah, the original trilogy. What, what was that last one called again? Um, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. It's your favorite. You got to know. The Last Command. That's it, yeah. Ha ha <laughs> Genius. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why that slipped my mind. I I don't know why either. Yeah, so so you loved reading about the Yimel Siri and Joris Kabouth. I don't know, I still know how to pronounce his name. Yeah, I don't Yeah. Joris C apostrophe Bouth. And then uh, George. We'll just name yeah, him George. 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 You know, um, I that was like my favorite trilogy. Um, growing I mean, up, that's like, cool and all, but I like Dark Empire better. I uh, for a continuation, I really liked Dark Empire. The art style I didn't like so much, but the the story I really liked. It was comics, Dark Horse. Okay. You know, and it, it, yeah. Uh, that, that, I think that was the Luke Skywalker we were all expecting to see, the all-powerful... Mandalorian? Uh, uh -huh. Well, we were, we were well yeah, to see him in yeah, the kind of, you know, the one that could, like, just take down a sh Star Destroyer. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, the... not, not the one that's, like, tripping over himself, disconnecting, drinking green titty milk from monster creatures. Well, mm. the theory behind that is um, he was hiding from, um, well, okay, so if you go back oh, to- Oh, yeah, I mean, he's hiding from Snoke. He disconnects himself from the Force, yeah, so well, he can't find you... him. Uh, but he went to Octo, which was one of the rumored uh, origins of the Jedi, but so was Tython. That's where we saw um, baby Grogu uh, do it before he got kidnapped by the um, Dark Troopers. Yeah, that was Tython. Well, Tython was part of Old Republic, right? Uh, it's old, old Republic. Well, yeah, like because, old, old. Because, yeah, it's, that's like the, a force nexus. Because uh, the... Nerds! <laughs> 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 because Palpatine learned, you know, the power of transferring his consciousness to another body from the Emperor from the Old Republic era. Um, what was his name? Started with a, a V. Was it a V? Mm, he should have learned it from Plagueis. No, I don't think it was... Until he got him drunk <laughs> one night and killed him. Well, see, he... If you read the book, he's not even sure if he even killed Plagueis. Well, he probably didn't. You know, if you don't really see him dead, kind of like That's Cad true. Bane at the end of Book That's of Boba true. Fett, his little heart monitor was going, you know, do we need to keep milking this cash cow any? You know, little baby Yoda is only going to last so long before he has to age a few years and finally start talking. 
<laughs> how is he gonna like? How is his speech pattern gonna be? Is it gonna be like Yoda's speech pattern? Dude, he's like, or is it gonna be he's like, like normal? Fifty-three. You need to start talking, kid. Start say something. Well, he's still considered a toddler I, in his species. I, so, actually, if you do the math, I'm not really sure. Yoda died around nine hundred years, and that would be about an eighteenth. Am I doing the math right? My brain isn't working. So, yeah, yeah, I'd be about an 18th. So, eh. so yeah, if that were an 18th and Yoda died at 900, then Yoda technically died at 18 years old. So, nah, a kid, you're like 20. Well, you know, Yoda you gotta be didn't something like really that. die, technically. He, eh, just he became, became one, one with the force. With the force. So, yeah, I mean, luminous beings like another... are we, not this crude matter. Blah, blah, blah. He could have lived another night. Um, no, as far as how is the child going to talk, I'm pretty sure I heard Yoda actually had like a speech impediment of some sort, and that's why he spoke that way. What about Yaddle? Didn't Yaddle um, speak the same way? She was also on the Jedi Council. I watched one of those short Tales of the Jedi, and I think she was speaking fine. Yeah, I, I think oh, okay. she was. Yeah, whatever. Well, we'll see. We'll find out in a couple of seasons. Uh, and a movie to wrap it all up. Because there were no Mandalorians in Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker. Or maybe they were just in hiding? Nah, they're dead. D-E-D? They're D-E-A-D. They're oh, dead. Deader than dead. Someone wipe, Thrawn's probably going to wipe them out. I could see that. Yeah. That'd be... That'd make more sense to me. That would be very plausible. You're taking notes? Someone that's not watching this? <laughs> yeah. All right. A roundabout. So, what kind of costumes have you done? I've done uh, my own Mandalorian. I've done... Uh, when I was a kid, I did Queen Amidala. Um, I did... A few years ago, I um, did Siri from The Witcher. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And that took me a couple of weeks to figure out the makeup because I don't really do makeup. So I had to watch a lot of YouTube tutorials for like, that. Like makeup makeup, not like yeah. pretty makeup. Yes. Okay. Makeup makeup, not, yeah, not like, pretty makeup. Yeah. Um. That that was a lot of fun. Um, trying to figure out um, how to get the scar across my face to look realistic like hers. That took a little bit of finagling because yeah, you can get you know the the scarring liquid, whatever, but you have to color it. Yeah, with that and kind getting, of makeup, it's always practice makes perfect. You don't yes. just go like, oh, I'm going to do this costume, show up to a convention, and, and stare at a mirror and go, Durr. that's not going to work. Nah, you're at home in the bathroom playing with stuff, washing it off till your skin is raw. Yes. Or YOLO. <laughs> I mean, you can just YOLO it. No, I... My face was uh, a little, a little tender... For, for about a week or so from all the scrubbing I did. Yeah. Your pores hated you. Oh, they did. Oh, they most definitely did. All right. So what's one of your favorite things to do around the shop? Um, That one's a tough one because I like everything I do at the shop. Well, I'm looking for your favorite thing so I can stop assigning the duties to you. Oh. Evil. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, my favorite thing is, is annoying you. Um, yeah, I tell you, just get the hell out. And then I just tell you I'll see you tomorrow. Whatever. <laughs> um, I'd have to say, you know, the sanding. I really... I enjoy the sanding. It, it's, a, it's a lot of, like, hands-on um, fixing, like the details, embellishing details and stuff. Um, I know, I'm just like dying to sand this right now. <laughs> I'm just oh, like, yeah, me too. it needs to be smooth. Yes. But it's not time yet. No, nope, not yet. But sanding is uh, one of my favorites. The painting is probably another like really big favorite. You just like to huff paint. 
Ugh, Which if you totally. go back to like our second or third episode, that's where I was talking about huff and paint. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of which, I need to get new filters for my mask. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Uh-huh. Okay. Like some of them at the hardware store. Because, uh... Getting working. a little spacey? <laughs> just just a teensy bit. And then, yeah, I, I put it on today and... Whew! It was like I was in the paint booth. Oh, okay. It's gotten a little clogged up. Very. Not, not, You're not supposed a little... to change them like every month. <laughs> nah. <laughs> like every six months? Yeah, maybe once a year if you're lucky. Uh, yeah, if you're change lucky. Change it when we start smelling things. <laughs> or you stop smelling things. <laughs> <laughs> or you get numb. Ooh. Yeah, the tingly fingers. Yeah, yeah, the tingly fingers because that's the one th that's that's probably rule number four of the shop is don't run in the paint booth without a mask if you think you're only going to be in there for a second because you're not going to be in there for a second and uh -huh. you're going to come out and your lips are going to be numb and your fingers are going to be numb and you're going to hate yourself in about an hour because you've got a <laughs> headache. Yep. That's that's exactly what's going to happen. And rule number one is shoes. Yes. Yeah, wear Closed shoes. Toe we don't shoes. do flip-flops and sandals around here. Wear shoes. I'd uh, take it a step further and I'm... I bought a pair of tennis shoes that are steel toe yeah. um, and thick soles because, you know, we, we have nails and stuff laying around that, you know, they get knocked off the workbench. We step on them. I don't want to go through my foot. Yeah. Rule number two is always wear gloves when messing with expandable foam. <laughs> Even if you're just going to touch it because you want to check to see if it's cured, put a glove on. I violate that rule all the time. All the time. And then you got, like, the, the sticky residue all over your finger that doesn't go away for, like, two days. Yeah. Uh, yeah, rule number three is uh, don't wear clothes you like. Yes. Definitely yeah. do not wear clothes you don't like. Don't wear clothes you like. Like, these are work shirts. They have work on them. I'm an embarrassment. I usually wear tank tops because... I sweat hot. a lot. It's, it's, it's hot. really hot in there. Yeah, we just went from temperate weather to, hey, it's summer. And it's going to get worse because yeah. August isn't here yet. Yeah. Uh, Open the door and we're nah, already drenched. Nah, the opening doors doesn't help. And then you hit a certain point in the late afternoon where just, you know, all the mosquitoes find you. Those bastards. I hate mosquitoes. The worst. Like, I get bit by mosquitoes now, and it's not just a little tiny bite. It's like a welt. Yeah, they're welts, and uh, they don't even go for the exposed skin anymore. They're going through clothing. Like, they're getting me through shirt, undershirt, and, like, on my back. Like, dude, yeah. I've got skin. Florida mosquitoes are no joke. It's the stuff that they keep spraying to try and control the mosquito population. It, I think it's, it's creating a, a super mosquito. It like, is. I'm itching right now just thinking about it. Like, I know yep. I've got mosquito bites mm -hmm. that are just waiting to welt up right now. Uh, yep. All right, let me see what else I got for you. Um, yeah, as for questions, that was really about it. Since there's anything you want to add. Mm. Not really. No, yeah. not really. I mean, there ain't much to it. No. Oh well, actually, um, you know, what's your dream project? What do you want to do? Ooh, um, that's a good question. Fem Shepherd from Mass Effect. Oh, it's more possible now. I'm just. Uh. Yeah, I mean it's very similar yeah. to the Halo armor. Well, Not it's, it's too much easier different. now. It's it's yeah. That's that I, I would have to say that would probably be um, my dream project. A lot of carbon fiber looking stuff. But, well, I mean yeah. you can change it to look anything because you are able to customize your armor and how it looks in game. I couldn't get into Mass Effect personally. I just couldn't. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I got kind of tired of being sent to planets to drive a little rover around to mine stuff. Like, nah, okay, okay. that's so, all right. The first game, 
the the driving mechanics are yeah it was awful. atrocious it was horrible it was enough so, for me to go nah no more for to me to make it even more fun i would make it my goal to try and force it to flip over upside down which is just about impossible and let me tell you i i got it flipped over 3 times and i celebrated all 3 times woo yeah, yeah. small victories all right well, that's going to wrap it up. So here may be a part-time every once in a while co-host, depending on if I decide to bring James back in or not. I hope you're watching this, James. You smell like cabbage. He might be made of cabbage. Ooh. Yeah. He's definitely hiding some of the beard somewhere. Yeah? Yeah, it just pulls it out, has a little snack, has some extra cabbage. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, and that does wrap us up. Uh, join us again next week. Maybe we'll have a uh, actual uh, closed-in topic instead of just an introduction. But thank you, Megan, for joining us. And do all that like, share, subscribe, and win. And brought to you again by Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, not really. I, I guess I'm kind of forgetting to keep up on that, too. But uh, we'll see you next week.